Christianity has been a cornerstone of Western civilization for centuries. It has a long history of shaping cultures and guiding beliefs. But what if there's another story, a hidden chapter withheld from the dominant narrative? The Ethiopian Bible throws open the doors to a world unseen, a treasure chest overflowing with knowledge that shatters our understanding of Christianity's core tenets. This video isn't just another dusty tome gathering cobwebs in a forgotten library. It is a vibrant curtain woven from ancient texts, brimming with revelations that challenge the foundation of established beliefs. Imagine a Bible unlike any you've encountered before. One that speaks of forgotten prophets, unveils celestial realms unseen, and whispers of alternative cosmologies that defy the Western-centric view of the universe. The Ethiopian Bible isn't content to simply echo familiar stories. It boldly presents a unique perspective, a rich drape interwoven with Jewish traditions, offering profound insights withheld from mainstream Christianity. But why has this sacred text been shrouded in secrecy? Why has its wisdom been suppressed, its voice silenced? The answer lies in the power it wields. The Ethiopian Bible dares to challenge the status quo, presenting narratives threatening established hierarchies and dominant ideologies. Texts like the Book of Enoch and the Kebra Nagast offer a glimpse into a world where power structures are reshaped and alternative truths hold sway. The Ethiopian Bible beckons us to embark on a journey of discovery, peel back the layers of concealment, and unearth the hidden knowledge within it. Join us as we delve into the depths of these hidden pages, a beacon of enlightenment that promises to illuminate a path toward a more complete understanding of Christianity's rich and multifaceted history. The knowledge surrounding the Ethiopian Bible has not been ordinary tales of ancient texts and forgotten lore. It's a story of hidden knowledge and suppressed truths. The Ethiopian Bible remains a mystery worldwide because its pages were veiled from the curious eyes of many Christians. The question is, what forbidden wisdom does it contain that rattles the foundations of conventional belief? Contrary to the familiar Bibles of Western Christianity and the Jewish tonic, the Ethiopian Bible boasts a vast canon, including texts not included in other Christian traditions. This controversy sets the Ethiopian Bible apart. The origins of the Ethiopian Bible trace back to the ancient Ethiopian language of Jijes, the linguistic bridge between the Ethiopian Church and the Aksumite Empire. The Ethiopian Bible, also known as Mezavkitis, was translated by the early missionaries and scholars. Since then, it has quickly gone on to embody the heritage of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church because of the unique canons it contains. Examples of books unique to the Ethiopian scroll include the Book of Enoch and Jubilees. These texts offer unique insights into Ethiopian theological perspectives, which have been controversial. This Ethiopian Bible has quite distinct manuscripts with their designs, vivid illustrations, and detailed designs. The vivid illustrations and the elaborate designs showcase the artistic traditions of Ethiopia and how Ethiopian art deeply blends with their spiritual identity. This Ethiopian Bible was made using indigenous materials called vellum. The vellum is crafted from goat or sheepskin. One of the unique books is the Book of Enoch. Unlike its counterparts in other Christian traditions, this text is not merely an addition, but a cornerstone that shapes the Ethiopian understanding of the world and humanity's place within it. Despite not being a part of the Christians' canons, the Book of Enoch holds sway over Ethiopian Christian beliefs. Its vivid depictions of divine judgment and the celestial realms have continually shaped the concept of Ethiopian spirituality. Yet, despite its significance, the Book of Enoch was sidelined from mainstream Christian scriptures. The Book of Enoch offers diversity in the early Christian texts that have been challenging the mainstream ideology of Western and Roman influences on Christianity. This book explains much about early Jewish apocalypticism and how it influenced Christian belief about the end times. The narrative starts with the Watchers, a group of angels who succumbed to earthly desires. These angels disobeyed divine orders. They descended upon the world and started taking human wives and fathering monstrous giants known as the Nephilim. 
This act of rebellion, vividly described in the Book of Enoch, disrupts the natural order and unleashes corruption upon all humanity. While the world descends into darkness, Enoch stands firm in his faith. Then God chooses him for a remarkable purpose. After going through a series of awe-inspiring celestial journeys, Enoch witnesses the wonders of the cosmos. He learns about the universe's origin, observes human history unfold like a curtain before him, and receives chilling visions of the coming judgment for the fallen angels and the corrupted world. These experiences solidify Enoch's role as a prophet and a bridge between the divine and humanity. His visions offer a glimpse into God's plan and the ultimate judgment for sin. Upon returning to earth, Enoch carries the weight of his heavenly knowledge. He becomes a lone voice in the wilderness, a prophet urging the people to repent and embrace righteousness. The Book of Enoch echoes his pronouncements. This book ventures beyond earthly concerns, delving into the mysteries of the afterlife. It describes various heavenly realms, offering a glimpse into the potential rewards for the righteous and the punishment awaiting the sinners. According to the book, Enoch's journeys also unveil the secrets of the cosmos, offering insights into astronomy, meteorology, and the universe's workings. These are very fundamental to the Ethiopian society. While this book was excluded from the Christian and Hebrew Bibles, it offers a fascinating window into an alternate biblical narrative, enriching our understanding of the relationship between humanity, angels, and the divine. As European exploration and missionary endeavors in Africa surged, during the 18th and 19th centuries, the Ethiopian Bible emerged from the shadows, captivating Western scholars with its unparalleled depth. However, the Western world feared the new ideas and didn't want to deal with them. Rather than embracing its diversity, they became wary of the challenges it posed to established theological norms. Another book in the Ethiopian canon is the Book of Baruch. This Book of Baruch is not typically found in other Christian canons, such as Catholic and Protestant churches. Baruch is considered one of the deuterocanonical books, meaning it's part of the Old Testament Apocrypha. It's attributed to Baruch ben Neriah, a scribe, a disciple, and a companion of the prophet Jeremiah. The book contains a mixture of prose and poetry reflecting on the themes of repentance, exile, and the restoration of Jerusalem. It also includes prayers and reflections on wisdom. Another central theme sparking the debate, showing the differences between the Ethiopian canon and the Orthodox Christian canon, is the promise of the Messiah, a divinely chosen figure that will usher in a golden age. Both Bibles depict this Messiah as a deliverer sent by God to redeem humanity from suffering and establish God's rule on earth. This Messiah era promises peace, justice, and a harmonious relationship with God. However, when we delve deeper, intriguing variations emerge in how each tradition portrays this pivotal figure. The Orthodox tradition often emphasizes the Messiah's role as a suffering servant, a humble figure who embodies compassion and forgiveness. This narrative aligns with the image of Jesus Christ presented in the New Testament, a figure who endured suffering to redeem humanity through his sacrifice. The Ethiopian Bible, however, influenced by texts like the Book of Enoch, might offer a more militant interpretation. Here, the Messiah could be a warrior king who actively conquers evil and establishes righteous rule through force. Another interesting divergence lies in the emphasis on the Messiah's reign. While both traditions acknowledge a coming transformation, the Orthodox Church might focus more on the Messiah's role as a spiritual redeemer, offering salvation beyond the earthly realm. The Ethiopian tradition, however, might lean more towards the Messiah's earthly reign, establishing a just and prosperous kingdom on earth before the ultimate transformation. Another text sparking the wide debate is the Book of Jubilee. While the Ethiopian Orthodox Church embraces it as divinely inspired scripture, offering historical details and interpretations of God's laws. The Orthodox Christian tradition excludes it from its official canon. This difference reflects the distinct theological priorities of each branch. For the Ethiopians, Jubilees aligns perfectly with their emphasis on history, law, and angelic activity. 
It fills the gap by providing specific dates and elaborating on God's commandments. However, the Orthodox Church prioritizes the core message of redemption through Jesus Christ. Jubilee's historical details and legal interpretations hold less importance than the established biblical texts and the teachings of the Church Fathers. The Kibra Nagast, meaning Glory of Kings, holds immense significance within the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. To the Ethiopians, it's not simply a religious text, it's an Ethiopian national epic. It is an intriguing tale of the Queen of Sheba's encounter with King Solomon and the legacy that followed. This narrative becomes a core foundation for the Ethiopian claim to Solomonic descent, solidifying their emperor's divine right to rule. Written in Gias, an ancient Ethiopian language, the Kibra Nagast remained largely inaccessible to non-Ethiopian Christians for centuries. This language barrier limited its influence outside Ethiopia until its translation into major languages in the 20th century. Furthermore, the Kebra Nagast presents interpretations of biblical events that diverge from mainstream Christian theology. A key example is the claim that the Ark of the Covenant resides in Ethiopia. The Kebra Nagast is a source of national pride and vital to Ethiopian Christian identity. In essence, the importance of the Kebra Nagast is rooted in its deep connection to Ethiopian history and theology. While it doesn't hold wider Christian significance, it remains a powerful and influential text within the Ethiopian Church. These texts challenge prevailing ideologies and power structures, offering alternative cosmologies and narratives that defy Western-centric views of the universe. In the face of such challenges, the Western world opted for suppression, seeking to silence the voice of Ethiopian Christianity and sever its connection to biblical figures. Throughout colonial periods, and under Western influence, efforts were made to discredit and banish non-Western religious texts, including the Ethiopian Bible. These efforts streamed from several reasons, such as cultural, racial, or religious dominance and attempting to control the narrative. But despite the attempts to erase its existence, the Ethiopian Bible endures, a testament to the resilience of Ethiopian Christian tradition and the enduring quest for truth. As we contemplate the mysteries within its pages, we are left to ponder, what wisdom has the world been deprived of in its subjugation? These extra books, like Enoch, Jubilee, and The Glory of Kings, challenge the way Western Christianity has done things for a long time. It's like they're throwing a wrench into the whole system. The Ethiopian Bible stands as a beacon of enlightenment, beckoning us to explore its depths and uncover the forbidden knowledge that lies within. Let us know in the comments if you would love to read the Ethiopian Bible or share more insights if you have read it already. If you're curious to learn more, check out the next video for an even more intriguing topic. Until next time, keep questioning, learning, and celebrating the rich and hidden heritage of African history. Thanks for watching.